Well, the Great Plague killed hundreds of millions of people in the Middle Ages and scientists are worried that climate change could send it roaring back across the world. There are still pockets of the disease in third world countries and even in the southwest of the United States where a boy fell ill back in June. Now, it came to Australia in the first years of the 20th century with more than 500 people killed in Sydney. Writer Manette Walters has set her new novel in the 14th century when half the population of England died from the plague and she's here now to chat to us. Welcome to Studio 10. Good morning. Lucky to be here. Bit of a light chat for a Friday. Um, <laughs> now, Minette, this, this disease was so savage in the past. Um, do you think if there was another major outbreak that the world would be able to handle it? Well, it's, it's treatable now with antibiotics, although I know we have problems with antibiotics. But if you think about Ebola or something like that, mm. where they took a, a rather too long, in a way, to, to contain mm. it, uh, it was contained probably within half a year. Mm. So I don't think we'll ever face a, a pandemic like they did in the 14th century again. I hope not, anyway, because it's very unpleasant. Conditions, conditions were much different back yes. then, weren't they? Talk us yes. through some of the hygiene um, challenges that they faced back in the 14th century. Well, they had none. Well, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> You put it absolutely right. That was the problem. Mm. And because it was spread by fleas from rats, <laughs> and the rats spread, and, of course, the more people who died, the more food there was for the rats. Oh. So the rats spread oh. faster, <laughs> and so did the fleas that lived Just on the rats. Talk us through what the plague actually was. What were the symptoms and how did people die? It was horrible. So you developed either large pustules or boils on your neck. Oh. Also, your groin and under oh, your armpits. Nice. And then... You're not having breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then, unfortunately, boils everywhere else as well, but much smaller. And then your blood turned black. But this oh. all happened within three to four days. Wow. It was so fast. What sort of numbers? Uh, I was shocked, mm. um, assuming they're correct. Run us through the numbers of people. Well, they estimate 200 million people died oh, in Europe. Two. And you've wow. got to recognise how small the population yes. would have been to start with. Mm. And so my stories are set in Dorset, which is the first county uh, that was afflicted by the pestilence in England. And the contemporary chroniclers said only one in ten survived. Wow. So that gives you a sense. Now, a lot of the... Um, the story deals with this, but free men and lords could leave the county. Mm. But the serfs who were tied to the land, they gave oaths to their mm. lords to remain on the land. They were stuck. They could oh, not leave. In disease. So yeah. they died. That's right. In some places, I think between about a third and half of the entire population Absolutely. was wiped out. Yeah. But it was actually very good for immigration and good for wages growth because suddenly there was a shortage of labourers and so it actually led to improved conditions for the, the peasantry. Totally, because it actually meant the end of serfdom because lords then had to pay their yeah. people oh. to work for them and they had to attract other farm labourers, if you like, from other lords. Mm. So there was, after the... So the silver lining to the dreadful cloud of the pestilence mm. was end of serfdom, beginning of progressive... That's right. Work. That's right. Yeah. So, so, Ned, so it's not a comedy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think that should, that should be the new slogan for the bubonic plague. The, bu the bubonic plague, not all bad. And then you've written so many wonderful so. crime novels, and thanks to you, I know what a scold's bridle is. Oh, right. Um, which was, I think, only your, your a third. A medieval book. instrument. Yeah, yeah, medieval instrument yeah. of torture for those asking. Yeah. But it's the name of. I think was that your third? Book? That was my third. Book. How long ago was that? Oh gosh, they were asking questions. Oh. It's got to Possibly be 20, 20 years ago. Um, what, what, what's brought you to this sort of book from from those crime? Ones that you, you first kind of made your name in? Well, it, my husband and I bought our house in Dorset and it, well, the, one of the first things we were told was that there was a plague pit round the church, oh. Oh, near nice. the church. And I'm very conscious, and we actually own the land around the church, and so I was very conscious, taking my dogs for a walk, that I was almost certainly walking on the plague pit. And I 
There's no record of those people. I hope you're wearing thongs. <laughs> <laughs> Boots. 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 <laughs> they were... There's no record of them, and I suppose... I was so tempted to write a story about the Black Death, and I think, in a way, I wanted to give all the people who died in my village a name, yeah. and I think I've done that in the book. Nice. Good on. Well, Minette Walter's latest book is called T The Turn of Midnight. It is out now. It's a ripper of a read. Minette, thanks so much for joining us this Lovely. morning. I love it. Thank you.